Greetings from Advent Lutheran Church in Lake Ann, Michigan. My name is Tim Jan. I'm the pastor of this congregation, and we're so glad that you've found us. We invite you to like this video and to follow our YouTube page to stay connected and hear God's good news uh, from us and, from, uh, and to you know, maybe see God's action in your life. That's our goal, is we want to connect through Christ. If you would like to worship with us, we do live stream our worship every Sunday morning at 9.30 in the morning. We also, if you happen to be around the area, we worship in person at 9.30 a.m. And you would be more than welcome to receive Holy Communion on any Sunday. I have the message, the gospel and the message for this upcoming Sunday, which is going to be September 11th, 2022. Let's pray together. O oh God, overflowing with mercy and compassion, you lead back to yourself all those who go astray. Preserve your people in your loving care, that we may reject whatever is contrary to you and may follow all things that sustain our life in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. This is the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming and eating near Jesus to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them? So he told them this parable. Which one of you... Having a hundred sheep and losing one of them does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together all his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found the sheep that was lost." Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels over one sinner who repents. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Jesus' stories of losing and finding make me think of a cartoon I saw several years ago, but it still makes me laugh. Two missionaries knock on a woman's door asking, Have you found Jesus? When you look closer at the corner of the cartoon, sure enough, yep, there he is hiding behind the curtains. My kids will tell you I always am up for a good game of hide-and-seek. But this cartoon doesn't just make me laugh, it makes me think. Oftentimes when we're trying to find Jesus, we find that Jesus has been there all along. In fact, the point of today's parable is whether or not we spend any time at all finding Jesus, God comes and finds us. That's what God's grace is all about. No matter how much our world may want to tell some folks to get lost, God still goes out and finds them. And no matter how many times we may lose our own way, God still comes and finds us. Christians do a lot of good things in the world. We like to pat ourselves on the back for the good things that we do and that we want to continue to do. That's this whole God's work, our hands thing that our congregation is observing this Sunday. And at the end of Sunday service, we are going to celebrate some of the good things, the good work that our hands have been able to do this year. But any nonprofit group can serve other people. Lots of them do. What sets us apart as people of faith is not that we do good things, but rather this message that God does things for us and for the world that we could never do for ourselves. 
God doesn't just serve and do good things. God goes after us when we have gone after the things that hurt and kill us. God loves and redeems and saves us through the grace of Jesus Christ, whether we acknowledge it or not, whether we like it or not, God finds us. That's the message. It's incredibly hard for us sometimes to just accept this gift of God's grace. We want to zero in on the one thing that maybe we have to do to seal the deal, whatever that one little thing is. Yet as we dig into these parables, let me quote Amy Jill Levine, who's a prominent New Testament scholar who focuses on the Jewish nature of Jesus' ministry. She says, It is unlikely a first century Jewish listener would hear the two parables and conclude that they have something to do with sheep repenting or coins confessing. Luke's gospel does talk about repentance, but the stories themselves are about people going to great and ridiculous lengths to just go find what they have lost. Of the two parables, the one that grabs my attention this week is the parable of the woman who lost her coin, her drachma, or the drama of the drachma, as I've started calling it. A drachma is a Greek coin worth about a day's wage. And to have 10 days worth of wages in her own home already tells us that this is a woman of some means. And you could hear this parable in such a way that this rich woman stands for God. If God gets to be the shepherd, then God is also the woman who's lighting a lamp. And this isn't totally unheard of, a female image for God. Isaiah 49 also portrays God as a nursing mother. So God, as the woman of the house, has lost her drachmas, a.k.a. one of her beloved children. And the drama of the drachma, so the way that she goes about finding her coin or her lost child or really any of us, It tells us a lot about God, how God operates, and about ourselves. The first thing God does is light a lamp. She doesn't wait until morning. She uses a valuable resource, oil, to shed light on every corner of the dark house and find that coin right away. Our souls, too, can be pretty dark places. So God lights us up with God's word. Psalm 199, I'm sorry, Psalm 119 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And this is where the analogy gets kind of weird because I guess we're the ones who really need to find our way. We know God can see us just fine, darkness or no, but for us to see God... For us to navigate in this world without getting more lost than we already are, without tripping over our own feet or falling into danger, we need a lamp. We need God's word. The only problem is, when the light of God's word hits the house of our souls, we see that it isn't always pretty. We are frankly a mess. Our lives are full of all sorts of clutter, all sorts of conflicting messages about who we are and about what we value and about what life itself is all about. So the second thing God does to find us is she sweeps the house. She cleans house. She really gets in there, too. She she searches carefully through every corner of the house. She sorts through all the piles of stuff in every corner of our lives and asks us, really? Is this worth keeping? My wife got me hooked on watching Tiny House Nation on Netflix. It's kind of fun to watch other families struggle with How many banjos is too many? Or how many books and craft supplies can reasonably fit into a 700 square foot home? It's fun to watch other families do it, but it's not so much fun to do it yourself, as you may know from experience. Especially if you have kids that object to letting go of even their first baby toys. And yet, 
Even less fun than that is when the house God is tidying up is our soul. When God says, what's in the keep pile, really? You want this grudge? You want those assumptions about others? You want this attitude about yourself? Do you want these judgments? Do you want these loyalties? Do you want those life commitments? Are you sure that you need five of those? What about one? Would that do better? Let's simplify. Once God lights the lamp and starts sweeping, some stuff is going to get thrown out. And it simplifies what we stand for. Who we really are, apart from all the labels that the world wants to put on us. It simplifies what we work and strive for. Is it really worth putting all our time and effort and money into things that don't last, that maybe we'll have forgotten about in five years anyway? Would we be working as hard and worrying so much if all we were concerned about is simply loving God and loving our neighbor today? And it simplifies what we believe in. Who is really in charge of this world and of our lives anyway? And how much help does she actually need from us? When God finds us and cleans up our lives, things get a lot simpler. But letting go of all the junk is a painful process. Sometimes it takes painful things. God doesn't cause painful things in our lives, but God can sometimes help use them to help us simplify. We find that if we don't throw all these things away, the Holy Spirit will. Today I'm thinking about how simple things got for a moment there, not for very long, but for a moment there after the September 11th attacks. 21 years ago this Sunday. For a moment there, when tragedy struck, we knew exactly who we were. We knew who we needed to talk to, the people we first called. We knew who, what we trusted in, and sometimes we realized that needed to change. I will never forget the whole U.S. House of Representatives standing on Capitol Hill for a moment of silence and then singing God Bless America together, even though that's not my favorite song. They sang it together because they all stood together. I will never forget people of faith in my community and all around dropping what they were doing and gathering to be a people of prayer. And I long for those days again. And by golly, this week, I'll never forget Queen Elizabeth, God bless her, when she ordered the national anthem to be played at the changing of the guard in Buckingham Palace, the U.S. national anthem, breaking centuries of, year of tradition just as a sign of solidarity. And even 20 years later, last year, she reminded us that her prayers are still with the victims and the survivors. She wasn't perfect anywhere any more than her nation was, or our nation is for that matter. But she was a woman of prayer. And today she knows by sight what she believed by faith all her life. That when God is looking for you, it's a good and blessed thing when she finds you. And this brings me to the last and maybe the most important step that God takes when God finds us. The search is not complete unless there's a party. I just love this part of the story. The woman finds her drachma and then she turns around and spends it on a party for friends and neighbors. And she says, rejoice with me for I have found the coin that was lost Folks, the God that we serve likes to throw parties. She likes to celebrate. She likes to eat and drink with all the heavenly hosts and with her neighbors and with us. Her message is not get right or I'll get you. It is rejoice with me. Rejoice with me for I have found the drachma, the coin, the beloved child who was lost. I need to remember that sometimes. That if we are doing it right, that life in Christ is a party. A celebration. 
of the God who made us, of God who found us, of God who invites us and the whole creation to sing out and rejoice with her. God finds us. God does whatever it takes. God lights a lamp and the whole invites the whole block over for a party every time we are found. Every time. Amen.